In Ezekiel 40 verse 2 it's written, In the visions of God brought he me into the land of Israel, set me upon a very high mountain, by which was as the fame of a city on the south. So in this verse we see the temple of Ezekiel's prophecy introduced. It's a prophecy which takes up several chapters at the end of the book of Ezekiel. Henry Sully, in his book, The Temple of Ezekiel's Prophecy, provides a logical and reasonable architectural interpretation of this vision. His picture of the temple has provided a useful means of visualizing the details of the prophecy. A key element of this uh, interpretation is the circular feature lying within a square frame. Henry Sully provides a detailed justification for this in his book. Once the assumption of the circular feature is made, then many of the details of Ezekiel's temple can be made to fit with this design. However, this design seems to be at odds with the rectangular designs of the tabernacle and Solomon's temple. But in this video we will show that the overall design of a circle within a square can indeed be derived from the temple of Solomon, or more accurately, a feature within Solomon's temple namely the Molten Sea. In Solomon's temple a Molten Sea was provided for the priests to obtain water to wash, with ten lavers being used for the cleansing of sacrifices. As we read in 2 Chronicles 4 verse 6, he made also ten lavers and put five on the right hand and five on the left to wash in them. Such things as they washed for the burnt offering they washed in them, but the sea was for the priests to wash in. The Molten Sea was a large circular cistern as we read in 1 Kings 7 verse 23 and he made a molten sea ten cubits from the one brim to the other it was round all about and his height was five cubits and a line of thirty cubits to compass it round about the molten sea generally contained two thousand baths or sixteen thousand gallons but if necessary it could hold three thousand baths as shown in the model the sea may have had a bulge in order to accommodate this volume the molten sea was supported on oxen. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east, and the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward, as we read in 1 Kings 7 verse 25. The size of the oxen in comparison to the sea is not revealed, but a possible configuration is shown in the model. The sea also had knops around the side and carvings of lilies on the brim. These are not shown on the model. The knops were apparently in the form of the heads of oxen. According to Strong, the Hebrew for knop comes from a root word meaning to burst. It may be that the knops incorporated openings by which water could burst forth when unplugged. There is a strong scriptural connection which directs us to compare the molten sea with the temple of Ezekiel. In 2 Chronicles 4 verse 10 it is written, And he set the sea on the right side of the east end over against the south. And in Ezekiel 47 verse 1 we also read of the east, right and south in relation to the temple. Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from the, under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. This link shows that the molten sea of Solomon's temple in some way foreshadows the temple and its waters in Ezekiel's prophecy. But before considering in detail the molten sea in relation to the design of the temple, we need to note the emphasis given to water in relation to the temple which will be built in the kingdom. In addition to Ezekiel 47, there are several other passages which speak of the water supply which comes from the temple in the kingdom. The psalmist wrote, There is a river, the streams whereof which shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. In Joel we read, And all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and the fountain shall come forth of the house of Yahweh, and shall water the valley of Shittim. And in Zechariah we read, and it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. Henry Sully headed the section in his book about the fountain and the rivers of the temple, Water Everywhere. 
This phrase accurately summarises the extent to which water is a dominating feature of Ezekiel's temple, both above and below ground. Water everywhere is a phrase which also aptly describes the molten sea. There has apparently been little written previously by Christophians with regard to the way in which the molten sea points forward to the kingdom. One person who did write about this was Eusebius Lazius, the daughter of Dr. Thomas. She wrote, There, also in the outer court, the molten sea, with its brim wrought like the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies, seeming to shadow the fountain of waters to issue forth from the sanctuary, with beds of lilies and sweet flowers environing its borders. We would suggest that, in addition to the comparison made by Eusebius Lazius, the molten sea points forward very specifically to the temple in the kingdom. The molten sea was a circle, but the positioning of three oxen at each point of the compass also provides the molten sea with four distinct sides onto which a square can be mapped. This arrangement reflects the encampment in the wilderness, as we read in Numbers 2. However, the specific use of the word three in relation to groups of things located north, east, south and west occurs elsewhere only in Ezekiel and Revelation, and in both cases it is associated with a city. In Ezekiel 48 the city called Yahweh is there is described. In verse 16 we see that the city is square and these shall be the measures thereof, the north side 4,500, and the south side 4,500, and on the east side 4,500, and the west side 4,500. Then later in the chapter the gates of the city are described, and the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel, three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate of Judah, one gate of Levi, and at the east side 4,500, and three gates, and one gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, one gate of Dan, and at the south side 4,500 measures, and three gates, one gate of Simeon, one gate of Issachar, one gate of Zebulun. At the west side 4,500 with their three gates, one gate of Gad, one gate of Asher, one gate of Naphtali. So, on each side of the square there were three gates. The city in Ezekiel 48 is an actual city which will be located in Israel to the south of the temple. In Revelation 21 a symbolic city is described with a similar arrangement of gates. And it had a wall great and high, and it had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. The examples from Ezekiel 48 and Revelation 21 show that groups of three things arranged on the north, east, south and west are associated with the square of a city. Thus, the square, which can be mapped around the molten sea, is reminiscent of a city. We have identified that the arrangement of the four groups of three oxen under the molten sea provide an outline of a square. The molten sea can thus be depicted as a circle within a square. This design matches the overall design of Ezekiel's temple as envisaged by Henry Sully. Thus the circular design of Ezekiel's temple can be derived from the molten sea in Solomon's temple. We have seen that the arrangement of three oxen on each point of the compass match the way in which the cities in Ezekiel 48 and Revelation 21 are described. The molten sea is therefore like a city. But as we saw at the beginning of the video, Ezekiel describes the appearance of the temple as the frame of a city. The arrangement of the oxen forming the base of the molten sea is like the frame of a city and thus foreshadows the temple in Ezekiel's prophecy. This video has shown that the basic plan of the temple envisaged by Henry Sully can be derived from the molten sea of Solomon's temple. In the tabernacle the source of water was the laver. In Solomon's temple there were the ten lavers and the molten sea. But in the kingdom the temple itself will be the source of water, the equivalent to the molten sea of Solomon's temple.